So now let's dig into some practical advice and some techniques that you can use when reality shifting, either to shift back into a reality that you're trying to get back to or to shift into a new one. In my experience, it's actually easy, easier to shift back. And there almost seems to be this, I call it a snapback mechanism. Other people have used similar terminology because I think it's very intuitive that when you start shifting, you get snapped back to a baseline. And so part of me has spent some time trying to understand why this is the case, particularly from a neuroscience point of view, because that's the angle that I like to look at things, and also from a psychological point of view. And so the roles and identities and understanding your baseline reality episodes are really about the psychology that I believe is responsible for snapping you back. And these elements can actually be used to your advantage when you are trying to get back. Because what we need to consider is that Let's say that you're on a map, right? Just imagine a map in your mind, like an old fashioned atlas map or a video game map. And your little corner of the world is where you have your day-to-day life and your day-to-day routine. And so now imagine that you are zooming out above your house or your apartment or wherever you live and you're zooming out far enough so you can sit in the sky and watch with your eyes all of your daily movements. So zoom, 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 eyes in the sky. Now you're a little speck, right? And let's say that you can see through the walls of your place. And so you wake up every morning and then Most people, I don't want to speak for you, but most people walk around in their space and they do it in a relatively ordered manner and it's pretty predictable. Maybe your schedule is different on certain days, so you might have a little bit of a different routine. And then imagine that you're going out to school, to class, to work, to social engagements, and your life is confined to this little section on the map. And let's just call it with your name, your corner, right? The more rigid you are in space and time, and I've talked about this in several different episodes, the more crystallized your reality is. What does that mean practically, right? It means that your little section of the map is, could be like harvested, you know, like excised. If we took like an X-Acto knife, a quantum X-Acto knife, you know, (laughs) and we could cut out like your little section and then we could actually see the grooves in space and time that you have followed in a sequence of a chain of events. And so the matter around you, the reality that you have been creating and reinforcing, we could stick in a museum and we could say, this is so-and-so's corner. This is so-and-so's life because Every decision, every action in the environment, we could take the average of that. Like, where do you usually keep your bills? Where do you keep your stacks of paper? Do you have a junk drawer? Is your place messy? Is it clean? And if we just took like an average snapshot, how constant would that be over your life over five years over three years over two years after your awakening after your awakening things change a lot and this is one of the the benefits of de-anchoring your reality 
and decrystallizing it or going through pretty severe loss, a major breakup, job loss, divorce. A lot of people on the dark night of the soul journey have their routines disrupted and their identities disrupted because their life is falling apart usually. Although people are awake without that nonsense, but a lot of people go the dark night of the soul awakening journey. And so that is one of the best opportunities to work with somebody to reestablish the new version of you. And this is what I do in the coaching, the, the support for identity shifting, because it's one of the most powerful ways to de-anchor you from your previous life and anchor you into a new life. So now imagine that in this museum that we have this excised version of your life, this little plot of land. And depending on how rigid your life is and how small your life is, it, that might be a really tiny map section, you know? Now imagine that you're a global traveler and that let's say you're a management consultant and so you don't really have a routine except in, in hotels, you know? And so then you might have a routine around the routines for travel, but your map over space and time over the course of your life or your career would be much more expansive in terms of the size of it, right? But if we got down to the nitty gritty of who you were and how you operated and functioned in space and time, like, okay, let's say that the hotel bars change and the restaurants change, but your schedule well, I don't know if you're actually a management consultant, then you're probably working a lot. <laughs> so you're probably in clients' offices a lot. And so the landscape will change, but your, and the projects will change, but your presence and energy and identity does not change. And so even though you're interfacing with a lot of different environments and a lot of different clients, you're still showing up as the same person. And so even though your map is bigger and more spacious, it's still crystallized because your core identity is management consultant and it dominates a lot of your time. Just for example, there are other demanding careers, doctors, attorneys, scientists, etc., and musicians. And so this is why it's really important to understand your role because even though the landscape may change, like you might be a digital nomad, right? And you might be an entrepreneur with a remote business all around the world, but you're still on calls in different landscapes and different settings, still interacting with the world, getting your Uber Eats delivered, not cooking, not always exploring, you know, like whatever your sequence is, it's more about how you're interacting with the world in space and time than just simply a dot on a map. But if you're just a dot on a map, what does that look like? Because that's even more rigid than some of the freer roles that you could be doing and as a result you're going to be very anchored in because your identity like how you show up to your airbnbs you carry a presence with you right how you show up on the plane how you talk to the people that you meet and especially if you're from the united states often the first question is oh so what do you do and then you go into your spiel right so your presence in your life crystallizes your reality in addition to rigidity to routine. So when we talk about de-anchoring, we need to look at all of the little pieces that keep you tethered into your baseline reality. So doing small things like completely disrupting your routine if you're 
usually a point A to point B type of person, a very linear type of person. I need to go to the store. I go to the same store. I go on the same day, around the same time. I buy the same food. Some people are like that. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But that level of rigidity is in effect an anchoring into a fixed reality. That store observes you and can predict your arrival. If the bread was conscious, if you eat bread, if the vegetables were conscious, it's like they are waiting for you to reach out. They are waiting for you to walk by. And it's like this feedback where the environment, like your device registers where you're at all the time, right? So it's like you have this echo chamber announcing you. And sure, it's digitized and it's anonymized and so they say, and (laughs) that's great, right? But it's still like attached to you and it's still pinging everything. Everybody is pinging everything around them. At least it used to be. <laughs> God, I don't, I don't even know about that. It's There's just a lot of noise. And there's a lot of announcements that you may not even be cognizant of. And this also is feedback in the environment. There are servers that geolocate you every second of the day. And this creates that crystallization because then the environment is observing you too. I know it seems like we just exist in this vacuum of our own perceptual experience, but every time you go out and you are observed, there are traffic cameras, there are toll booth cameras, there are people that say hi to you, there are dogs that see you, dogs that smell you. There, All of these are anchoring effects. So when you truly want to de-anchor Sometimes when I'm de-anchoring, I can't go out. I cannot be seen. It's an intuitive feeling. And it's just this knowing that I can't be acknowledged in the environment until my shift event is done. And so that's why you have to be really in tune with your intuition. And so when we think about anchoring, then you can use these same principles. You can go out, just take a walk in a park, say hi to everybody that you come across. I'm serious. Make eye contact, smile. If you want to de-anchor and you have to go out, put on sunglasses. Don't make any eye contact. Don't say hello. I mean, don't be weird, right? Just do like, if somebody's persistent, you can just like nod and move on with your day, but don't start initiating conversations being like hey how are you doing don't go and hug all the trees don't take mushrooms and sit on the ground you know like these are very potent grounding techniques that will anchor you into the ley lines of the earth and so similarly if you do need to ground and you do need to anchor Go shopping. I kid you not. Shopping is so great. Consumerism is really great for grounding you in a material existence. There's something about holding, browsing, touching, looking, you know, like just touching a a pink silk blouse and then buying it ideally with cash. Cash is a very grounding tool. Um, I learned this because at one point I needed to ground when I was in Southeast Asia because I thought I was going to float away and I was about to lose my mind. Oh my God, my crown chakra was open and it was, it was intense and I was having trouble just having normal conversations. And so I reached out to a couple of friends on this spiritual awakening journey and I was like, help, (laughs) what do I do? And one of them told me to go and buy things with cash and cash. And I know not every like society has cash, but if you can, 
it's a great idea because it's a very grounding transaction, more so than credit cards. There's something about holding money and the energy of the vibration of the currency of the place that you're in has a distinct feel to it. Like currency has different vibrations. This is what I've recently learned. And so by being in tune with your plane of existence that you're trying to anchor into, going to the ATM, pulling out cash, and using that cash as you're looking people in the eye, and it could just be the store clerks, right? Take off your sunglasses, look them in the eye, and hand them the money very intentionally. These are the sorts of things that will ground you into the plane of existence. Another anchoring technique is taking off your shoes and connecting with the plane of existence, the earth energy. Earth has different frequencies as well and different vibrations depending on where you're at. And so by touching nature, touching the trees, putting your feet on the ground, sitting on the ground, laying on the ground is fantastic. If you have a place where you can do that, that is a very, very powerful anchoring tool. Similarly, whenever you get to where you're trying to go and you want to anchor into that reality, one of the most powerful things you can do is to make a plan, talk to people about that plan, even if it's remotely on your personal handheld communication device, text your friends and your family. Some of the messages may not go through depending on if it's a binary origin device. I've noticed lag delays and sometimes different messages load. I talked about that before, so I won't rehash that here. But expect that when you are in between places or you're in between worlds, telecommunications gets a little screwy. It's just part of it. So do bank transfers. Another reason why cash is great. And so what you want to do is you want to announce your presence by catalyzing something in your life, a plan of action. Take that action, set up a business, get your LLC, do something official, go to the post office, mail a postcard, and you know, like use the systems that are present around you. Go buy a train ticket. And these are all like small things that seem kind of silly, but actually are very impactful because you might notice that you might have a a different version of the train ticket or parking ticket. I've had that happen where the parking tickets have changed, you know, like uh, when you park your car and then you get like the little prepay thing or the thing that you pay after and not like the, at the meter when you overstay and then you get a parking ticket, but, um, it's a record of your presence there and it's an announcement. And so you want to do things like that. Go check your mail. Another great anchoring thing. Although just be advised that when you're doing pretty big quantum shifts, this is what happened to me. You might change mailboxes and it's so exciting when you figure out where your packages are. (laughs) Oh my God. I still have those videos. I had two sets of keys. I have no idea how that happened. Anyway, so fun things can happen. That's why you got to be cool about it and go with the flow. And so go check your mail. Use the systems. Go to your concierge. Ask for something. Have something delivered. Order Uber Eats if it exists there. When you use these services, it's sort of the environment recognizing that you exist. And similarly, or no, in contrast, if you want to de-anchor, then you want to limit all of these things. You want to limit your actions. You want to disrupt your routine. So if you are used to getting up and then checking your phone and then going to the bathroom, reverse the order. If you're used to drinking coffee, then start drinking energy drinks instead have different types. If 
you are used to having a certain breakfast, do something completely different. And so when you accumulate these differences, then you disrupt that crystallization process. And when you pair that with shifts in identity and trying on different roles and expressing different parts of yourself, then you open yourself up to be a better match for some of the realities that you're trying to bring in. But keep in mind that if there is a really big disparity between the reality that you're trying to get to and you haven't done the internal shift, you're not going to be able to anchor in there. Not yet. I have not found a way and I've tried numerous techniques, but when I was too far into the future as the present version of me, I had a very difficult time sticking those realities. I could explore them. I could sense them. The craziest things would happen when there was too big of a discrepancy. My brain would actually overwrite it. Like I was expecting communications. I was expecting certain things. And then when I had those, sh those things show up, like I had a letter show up in my apartment in an envelope that had a plane ticket. That was my expectation. I saw this morph into my reality as I was shifting. But because it was too far out of the ordinary for me, even though I was reality shifting, right? And even though I was coming from like liquid worlds. <laughs> so, you know, I was already experiencing some pretty wild things. And I had at that point four or five I can't remember if it was just four or if it was also the fifth one that I was rotating in and out of on a daily basis. And I was fully immersed in the exploration process. I was excited by it. So it wasn't like I was freaked out, right? But there was some mechanism in my brain that when it saw that envelope, I couldn't parse it and it overrode it and it disappeared like I went out to to reach it I had this oh my god response this anxiety response and this gets into some other issues that I noticed with anchoring in vastly different reality layers when you wake up in an alien world your body freaks out right you have no control over that I think it's an evolutionary mechanism but unfortunately it keeps us tethered into the familiar and when you step outside to have your morning cup of coffee and you look out into the distance and you're expecting to see the mountains and you see a city landscape, you freak out. It just, the brain will not let you for whatever reason. And it's been incredibly frustrating. I also had an experience when I was in Dallas and I was shifting and I opened up this portal. I was in this um, park area and I pulled over and I was standing like in this, uh, it's not really the woods because it was really close to the road. You know, it was probably only like a two minute walk away from the road. And the first part of the walk was in a grassy hilly area. And then there were some trees. So I was like just in the tree line and it was winter time. So I could see through the trees and I stood there and I was trying out different things and I opened up a portal and I was trying to go to Bali in uh, 1980 because I thought that I had friends there. And so I was trying to connect with another timeline and a different country altogether. And I was also testing the range of abilities and I successfully opened the portal and then I shifted and I could hear this was the craziest thing I could hear my sensory system change my perceptual system morphed the sound and instead of like the the normal Dallas like background drop of sound I heard monkeys and I heard um, the cicadas of Bali. And then as my vision was starting to shift as well, as the trees were starting to shift, I had this moment of panic where I was like, oh my God, 
is my car there? Do I have credit cards? Do I have money? Do I, do I actually have friends there? Does my cell phone work? <laughs> and so all of these panic moments shifted me, snapped me right back to Dallas. And I was never able to, to get that far again. And I would, to be fair, I only was really kind of trying things out. And so the point is, is that when you have that innate, oh my God, reaction, it's usually because the environment that you're shifting into is too far from where you're at. And in those situations, I've tried so many techniques, but found it impossible to shift into and anchor myself into and to hold myself there. I could get there for a couple of seconds and I could practice it. And I did for a long time. And I went to a variety of different places, a variety of different worlds. It's endless, you know, it's endless. The options are endless. The problem is, is that this is my belief. When you show up to one of those places as the person you are in the present moment that is still mostly tethered to a baseline reality that is way far away, it doesn't work and it overwrites it. It actually blurs the potential. And I feel that it actually pushes the potentials further away because it creates this boundary between you and the potential reality, you're coming with a moat around you. It's a weird way to say it, but it's like you're pushing away. Like there's something energetically like a donut around you that is pushing away the realities that you are actually trying to get to until you shift your internal persona and practice that. And that is worth its own episode, but I don't have time to do that right now. And so you have to shift the internal and the external, and those have to be in close, approximate degrees of a match for you to anchor into. So I don't advise just trying to anchor into whatever reality that is around you in space and time or that you're exploring. My recommendation is actually to explore it, figure out where you want to go, chart a course to get there by doing the internal work to make sure you're a match for it. Because otherwise, I have this opinion that you're actually wasting the opportunity because you're showing up but you're showing up not as the person that you can slide into like if you have an avatar there you're not going to be a match for the avatar and it creates a fighting dynamic where you're trying to slide your consciousness into a version of you but that version of you feels different so then it feels taken over like you're trying to go and one up it, but if it has consciousness, then that's a, a violation, right? So you have to be at the merge point to where you can smoothly and gently integrate your consciousness with whatever avatar and life you have there. If you would like to work one-on-one -on -one and practice some of these techniques or to talk about your anchoring strategy or de-anchoring strategy, feel free to reach out to me at sacredjourneyproductions at gmail.com.